Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. On this first day of the new moon, we come together in our circle for focused group meditation for the common good. This month, in the sign of Aries, we focus on the topic of Aquarian leadership. Leader who serves the common good. Aries has been part of the Cardinal Cross, brings us a theme, one of three themes uh, that we feature through our work this year. And in the science of the Cardinal Cross, we focus on the theme of cleaning the house of religion and politics. So today we reflect on who is an Aquarian leader that holds the common good as a main motive and focus for their work. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. And um, we just now, if you've joined these webinars before, we'll re remember that we sound our purpose at this point um, and reinforce our purpose in this project, which we have named meditation for the common good um, and its purpose is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan as much as we can apprehend it for our planet through group meditation which focuses group intention for the common good and brings spiritual laws and principles to life and magnetizes spirit saturated thought forms of solution for practical action. And as Alexander said, we're focusing on Aquarian leadership, working on the Cardinal Cross, where we explore topics related to new leadership and governance in connection with cleaning the house of politics and religion. So we align with the sign of Aries that initiates the year and through which the first ray of will and power reaches us, expressing itself through the great creative process. So as we seek to support the development of more just, inclusive and spirit infused forms of leadership, we invoke the creative power of Aries within this waxing tide of the moon that the impressions and thought forms evoked through our meditation may flow forth to enrich the evolution of human consciousness. As we draw together around this intention, I will hand over to Tracy who will begin our overall alignment as we move into the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance. As we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers and the Action Area group members. As your name is called, 
please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. This is Alexander calling in from Brooklyn, New York in the United States. Welcome, Rebecca. This is Rebecca calling in from the east coast of Australia, just above Brisbane on the Sunshine Coast. Welcome, Katya. Uh, Katya Kaufman calling from New York, US. Welcome, Martha. Hello everyone, Martha Gallahue calling in from Weehawken, New Jersey, US. Welcome, Daniela. Daniela Nestorovic calling in from Brussels, Belgium, Europe. Welcome, Andrea. This is Andrea Ross. I'm calling from an airplane above the eastern coast of the United States. Welcome, Aneta. Good luck. Welcome, Cheryl. Cheryl Binson, uh, today calling in from Boise, Idaho, U.S. Thank you. Welcome. Clinton. Clinton, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Danielle. Danielle, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Darcy. Darcy, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Francis. Good morning, Francis Cadet calling in from beautiful Victoria, British Columbia on the Pacific. Welcome. Frida. Frida Kemp calling in from Toronto, Canada. Welcome. Gail. Hi, this is Gail Jolly calling from Asheville, North Carolina, USA. Welcome. Jillian. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, we certainly Hello. can. Hello. Oh, good. Hello, <laughs> Gillian Douglas from UK. Welcome. Thank Helen. You. Uh, this is Helen Franklin from England, near London. Welcome. Jeffrey. This is Jeffrey Swainhart from Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the US. Welcome. Yoka.
Jocke, please unmute yourself. Welcome. Catherine. This is Catherine Thomas calling from Boston, Massachusetts, USA. Welcome. Leslie. Leslie, please unmute yourself. Leslie Van. Welcome. Lynn. This is Lynn Green calling from Columbus, Ohio, US. Welcome. Welcome. Lynn. Uh, Lynn Murguia calling from Tucson, Arizona, US. USA. Welcome. Marguerite. Marguerite Nagels calling from San Diego, California, USA. Welcome. Martine. Hello, this is Martine from Belgium, Chateau. Welcome. Maureen. Maureen, please unmute yourself. We cannot hear you, Maureen, but we see your microphone. Welcome, Maureen. Maya. Hello, everyone. This is Maya Costley calling from Grass Valley, California, United States. Welcome. Welcome. Natalie. Natalie from the from Nelson in the South Island of New Zealand. Welcome. Rosvita. Rosvita, please unmute yourself. Roswitha from Geneva. Can you hear me? We can. Welcome. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. First time I managed. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Happy to Thank have you. all of you. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Katya. Actually, I'll just introduce the action area group before we go further. <laughs> Sorry about that, Rebecca. <laughs> Thank Just you. jumping ahead there. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. So, um, just letting everyone know that our action area group and other interested meditators gathered to contemplate our topic at the time of the full moon of Aries and. Um, some of you may have been with us then. 
um, and the impressions generated from the work at the full moon have been held and brooded over by the action area group and our subjective group and also perhaps some of you during the preparation phase for this webinar. So it really is a whole community process um, and with our action area group um, harvesting the energies that have been generated by everyone up to this time of the new moon. So this month our action area group is made up of Martha, Tracy, Katya and myself and we would also like to acknowledge the contributions for, from Begit, who was not able to be with us today and Lynn Green who has been with us at our meetings and provided support and input into our action area group. So um, over to the action area group to um, lead us in some synthesizing thoughts in preparation for the meditation and over to you Katya. Hello everyone. So um, we start with our um, subject looking at the theme Aquarian server and uh, we'll see how this Aryan energy is related to Aquarian service and it is related through the rays that are coming through Aries it's first first ray and seventh ray and seventh ray through planet Uranus that governs Aquarius and that allows the input from um, the divine aspects of the law it, it shows us the hidden truth and brings in the renewal something that is totally new and so when we stand in uh, Aryan energy we are deeply connected to this principle and we can <laughs> propel that principle through the whole year set up an intention of that energy to follow us and support us throughout the whole year in all our endeavors including when we support or look at the principles of serving in agrarian way We also work with the Mercury when we are in Aries, and that is the fourth ray. So first and seventh, a very strong presence of energy of will, and there is a balancing point, the point of the heart, the fourth center that balances first and seventh. a messenger a messenger that can deliver us that new idea new knowledge through the integrating principle of the heart and that becomes very important i believe when we talk about the aquarian service because essentially to me it is the principle of group consciousness and group service so we serve as a group 
in agrarian age. And that is the main, uh, to me, the main difference from the age of Pisces. Tibetan, you know, he writes it, he, he writes a lot about that. There, there, there's a whole law of group progress. But if we start the idea and in areas we plant a thought form, we bring it in and we use it throughout the year, looking at it from different perspective of the next uh, signs, next energy, energies of the next signs. So I suggest we look at this idea of group service now from the very, very beginning. So in, um, in Discipleship in Your Age, Volume 2, Section 1, Talks to Disciples. It's page, I believe, 94. He says, The thought constantly enters my mind as to what I can say in order to make the group work, group relationships, group identification, and group initiation a sound, active and factual reality in your minds and in the minds of the aspirants and disciples. A sound, active and factual reality in your minds and in the minds of other aspirants and disciples. I seek with profound earnestness to make this theme or subject true and vital because it is an essentially new esoteric concept and a germ thought which the many aspirants of the world must grasp. So he goes more and more about that, but to me, the most essential part is for us to really bring it in and um, keep bringing it in, the realization of group service. When we look at politics, we already see that merging, emerging. We can see that teams, you know, are basically coming as a next step of leadership. But we have this still combination of a visionary, one person, and then the team working out his or her vision. And when it comes to group, truly group work, then it be, the group becomes the visionary. And the group implements the vision according to ability and <clears throat> so responsibilities you know becomes the ability of each member to see the whole and the part that you know can be best done by them but by that particular member of the group so it is a big topic And uh, I hope we'll discuss it in depth over uh, throughout this year. And the last thing I wanted to say that when we see the group as one being, we also see how energies are going through that group being and just being distributed to the group members through those group centers, etheric energy centers that are much greater in capacity than individual centers of every individual member. So we can use that work, this kind of work, even at the beginning as, as if we are one group, one group being. 
and uh, use it in a very practical way. Thank you. And uh, over to you, Martha. Hello, everyone. I think you will find the actionary group saying the same thing in different ways. When we, um, and I appreciate your linking the work of the leader with the astrological s signs and m moving into the leader as attuned in a special way to group. When we began discussing this, the question in my focus, for whatever reason, was the vertical alignment that the Aquarian leader um, had with the universe. And uh, I invite you, yes, you are ahead of me. Beautiful, thank you so much. That the Aquarian leader stands in being with the great laws of the universe. And I thought maybe we could illustrate by mentioning just a few. Shortly before <clears throat> this presentation came up, I found something in uh, Helena Blavatsky, The Voice of Silence, uh, page 95. Compassion is no attribute. It is the law of laws. Eternal harmony. Alea self. A shoreless, universal essence. The light of everlasting right. And the fitness of all things. The law of love. Eternal. We humans sometimes, in our own limited ways, forget how important and essential this linkage to our solar system, this, the spiritual sun hidden behind the golden disk, the overlord of Shambhala. And I think that here Blavatsky's inviting us to trust in our capacity for expanded consciousness to begin thinking about Aquarian leadership from the perspective of the light of the sun that filters down into our planet through Shambhala. The Aquarian leader is skilled in exercising force via the laws filtered from the cosmos into the planet. She stands in attention to the planetary purpose. In Cosmic Fire, we read, another form of energy which must ever be considered is that of the planetary logos as he pours his force through some one chain or one globe upon the groups of evolving human units. This, from the human standpoint, cannot as yet be calculated as it is dependent upon the occult turning of the attention by the planetary logos in meditation upon any center in his body corporate. This body corporate to me stands for the Aquarian leader. It involves cognizance of the planetary individual purpose which is not yet revealed. So the Aquarian leader intuits, aligns with, holds steady through crisis, 
grasps what is to be learned through the crisis and reaffirms a vision that lifts up those who experience the crisis. We see this in such times as after World War II, when the Marshall Plan, which essentially rebuilt that which was destroyed in Germany, or the post-COVID axiom at the UN now, we build back better what was lost. In crisis, the Aquarian leader comes to the new vision, is able to bridge the gap between the prophetess Greta Thunberg and former Prime Minister Gro Brutland, who instigated the environmental program from which the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change emerged. So the Aquarian leader brings others into an inter-cooperating interplay. This interplay includes the melding of the rays. No matter what the individual ray of any Aquarian leader, as Katja mentioned, it is truly the group purpose with a blend of rays. For now, let us imagine those rays that predominant, predominate will be one, two through four, and seven. Some identify this with the ashram of synthesis that Master DK formed with Master Moria and Rokotsi in the mid 20th century. It may be through that effort, the recognition or the vision of what needed to constitute an Aquarian leader emanated. So when we think of the rays merging, we think of them merging through the three cosmic laws that come together. The law of synthesis. It is the law that demonstrates the fact that all things, abstract and concrete, exist as one. It is the law governing the thought form of that one of the cosmic logoi in whose consciousness both our system and our greater center have a part. It is the sum total, the center and the periphery and the circle of manifestation regarded as a unit. The Aquarian leader asserts the fact the souls of all are one. She seeks fusion. The second law here, the law of attraction and repulsion. Fundamentally, the law describes the compelling force of attraction that holds our solar system to the Syrian that holds our planets revolving around our central unit, the sun, that holds the lesser systems of atomic and molecular matter circulating around a center in the planet. She sees the greatest light, stands in right proportionality, discerns that which is essential from the phenomenal. She has common sense. She is wise. The third cosmic law, the law of economy, is the law which adjusts all the concerns, the material and the spiritual evolution of the cosmos to the best possible advantage and with the least expenditure of force. It makes perfect each atom of time and each eternal period and carries all onward, upward, and through. 
with the least possible effort, with the proper adjustment of equilibrium, with the necessary rate of rhythm. Purpose itself am I. The Aquarian leader has a good sense of right timing and encourages the proper sequencing of human activity within the laws of evolution and evolution, involution. And now with the fourth point, which Katya had alluded to further, and feel free to change the slide, Sasha, whenever you're ready. The Aquarian leader, now a group entity, these three become one, however way we see it. It brings to mind the words of power in Ray 5, three minds become one. It is said in Glamour, a world problem that the humanity's personality ray will shift from four to five. The means by which the blending takes place may be seen through the law of periodicity. This law governs all manifestation, whether it is the manifestation of a solar logos through the medium of a solar system, or the manifestation of a human being through the medium of a form. This law controls likewise in all the kingdoms of nature. It is said it's one of the most difficult laws because the Aquarian leader needs to blend the rotary, that would be the, the, the activity of matter, the forward motion, that would be the impulse of Ray 1, with the spherilic cyclic. One, two, and seven. She blends the highest with the lowest. Group love is the effect. So when we look at the Aquarian leader from the standpoint of the laws of the universe, we can say the Aquarian leader redeems matter. The role of the mother, mother of the world comes to fruition. She lifts her veil. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Martha. And thank you, Katya. As we begin the process of visualization and magnetizing our thoughts concerning leadership in the Aquarian age, let's begin by asking a few questions. How can Aquarian leadership serve the common good? What qualities of leadership serve the common good? And what laws and principles would apply to Aquarian leadership? Which I believe Martha has gone in depth on that. Like the Phoenix rising from the ashes of its predecessor, the Aquarian age has arrived. The difficulties and suppression humanity has endured from its leaders during the Piscean age are coming to an end. The cosmos is now flooding us with Aquarian energy, and humanity is moving onward and upward within its spiral of evolution. From solar plexus-driven selfish and individual motivation to selfless heart-centered brotherhood, we now begin to ride the wave of Aquarius. Oops. 
Aquarian leaders will champion serving the common good. They will be easily recognized by their selfless inspiration, clear vision, and spiritual motivation. These leaders will teach that the function of each nation is in the perfecting of its national life, rhythm, and machinery so that it can be an efficient co-partner with other nations. Men will begin to feel more secure as they seek to develop international goodwill and learn they can trust each other. And over time, we will no longer depend upon the strength of armies and fleets, but instead camaraderie and brotherhood will be the higher form of interaction. Aquarian leaders will deem it essential that the new world order should develop in humanity a sense of divinity and of relationship to God, yet with no emphasis upon rash, racial theologies and separative creeds. All people will begin to awaken and embrace the oneness of our human race, and brotherly love will be the glue holding us together. Lost will be the emphasis on material possessions, things, and money. Our primary responsibilities will be restoring and promoting the highest quality of psychological, spiritual, and physical conditions for mankind. Each one of us will become a leader in our own right through the practice of right living, and the world shall be revitalized. It will be a process of daily living through the sacrifice of personal interests for the good of the whole. It is the living Christ, the living world savior, who saves humanity, proactively participating in the common good on all levels, from family to world affairs. Aquarian leadership will follow the law of economy naturally by working through groups. Purpose and clear vision for the common good of mankind will be centered in the heart chakra, which will invoke the law of magnetism, as well as permeate Buddhic qualities to all efforts made. And through the law of synthesis, desired outcomes will be sustained. I'd like to finish by reading William Shakespeare's Sonnet 94, which expresses some of the virtues we see or will see in Aquarian leaders. They that have power to hurt and will do none, that do not do the thing they most do show, who moving others are themselves as stone, unmoved, cold, and to temptation slow. They rightly do inherit heaven's graces and husband nature's riches from expense. They are the lords and owners of their faces, others but stewards of their excellence. The summer's flower is to the summer sweet, though to itself it only live and die. But if that flower with base infection meet, the basest weed outbraves his dignity, for sweetest things turn sourest by their deeds. Lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Tracy. And let's just take a moment to absorb all of those ideas and thought forms that have come so far.
And as Martha pointed out, um, the very nature of our topic draws forth a reiteration of ideas and material and concepts from different angles and facets. So um, I'm starting with a quote that um, really relates to what we're all saying and particularly what Katya was saying. The Tibetan tells us in esoteric astrology that group awareness, group awareness is the gift conferred by Aquarian activity. And that in Aquarius, the superconscious divine man transcends his limited self consciousness. So, at a practical level, this foundational Aquarian idea is suggesting that to me, that leadership in the Aquarian age will become group oriented and group based. And the responsibility for vision and purpose and flow of action will be dis distributed across the group members or where group fusion is possible. It will fall on the whole group as a single entity or organism. So we have the, the idea of the group itself as the leader and leadership as a group process. And while group cohesion can be just as easily formed around selfish materialistic motive, motives, the tide of evolution is demanding of us that human beings move towards a group consciousness consciousness that is inclusive and based on the law of group life where individuals in solving their problems ask themselves whether their proposed actions will tend towards the group good or the common good as we're calling it. So as we seek to clean the houses of religion and politics in preparation for the return of the Christ, we're seeking for new forms of social organization. And this is a process of leading ourselves as humanity into the new era. And we should also consider that our social organization plays an important part in forming our leadership processes and styles. So um, we have a little diagram here. Rudolf Steiner proposed a threefold social order that's worth pondering in this context. He suggested the separation of social life into three spheres of economics focused on meeting human needs through the sense of brotherliness, which um, can come about as a way of uplifting the division of labor that has developed in our modern world where we can um, appreciate the value of everything that we make and do as a part of a greater whole. Um, then the sphere of legal and political life which he suggested should be focused on the pursuit of equality particularly on the pursuit of equality and separate from the economic sphere. Um, and then um, the separate sphere of cultural life focused on the pursuit of freedom and of the freedom of individuals to develop themselves in accordance with their own destiny and to relate to, the, to each other freely um, as from where they're at, as, where, as who they are. So he suggests that by separating these three spheres, a greater purity of motive and spiritual vitality in leadership can develop 
as economic interests cease to dominate culture and influence legal and political activity. Contemporary leadership models are already foreshadowing the Aquarian leaning toward group fusion and concern with the common good. In the Aquarian spirit of service, Robert Greenleaf's servant leadership prioritizes the growth and well being of the people in the leadership community. We've also got many experiments going on in collaborative leadership, which focus on maintaining an inclusive process that activates everyone's talents and gives everyone a voice. And the qualities and lessons of leadership now become the ground that we must all stand on as we learn to lead ourselves together in group formation. Some of the important leadership lessons and qualities indicated by the Tibetan are the formulation of a potent sense of vision, which impels and inspires, the development of a sense of proportion, which enables us to walk humbly together, the growth of a spirit of synthesis, which enables a broad inclusiveness and the bridging between the physical and the spiritual and the avoidance of criticism. Helen Franklin formulated the pithy statement um, posted in the community um, sharing board that Aquarian leadership reminds us all how important it is to loosen the bonds we have to personality and to listen to the group soul. This quality of deep listening to our souls, our own souls, as well as group soul and to each other is also gaining influence in the contemporary leadership field. And it's an esoteric task or quality that we're called to work on. Rudolf Steiner tells us that of very special importance for the pupil's development is the way in which he listens to others when they are speaking. He must accustom himself to do this in such a way that while listening, his own inner self is absolutely silent. He comes to listen to the words of others quite selflessly, while completely shutting out his own personality with its opinions and trends of feeling. When he has trained himself to listen without criticism, even when the most preposterous statement is made in his presence, he learns gradually to merge himself into the being of another. Then he hears through the words into the very soul of the other. These are the disciplines we look to cultivate as we move through the fires of group work. And as we do so, we carry with us the intention of beginning to form prototypes for leadership, leadership through selfless group orientation within the human family at large. So we come now to the time when we gather in all these thoughts, all these ideas, and we let them sit quietly in the atmosphere of the group. 
as we open ourselves up to meditation on this topic. So let us see in the center of our group encircled by all our lights, our group chalice, which receives and holds and distributes the energy of our meditation together. We invite ourselves, our souls, to connect in the center of the chalice, receiving a downflow of impressions. Magnetized by the seed thoughts, that the action area group brings to offer into the chalice. So let us silently for a few moments connect with source flowing into us and into the group. And I now invite Katya's offering to Uranus. Aries is related to Aquarius. In an Aquarius produced the world server who voluntarily stays upon the great wheel in order to help humanity to find liberation on the fixed cross. We are one seven. And four. An Aquarian server group disciple. From individual consciousness to group consciousness.
Martha. The Aquarian leader lives in being with the cosmic, solar, planetary laws and holds the vision of the common good. With hands outstretched, the leader links the heavens and the earth. Synthesis is the keynote. Wisdom is the expression. Tracy. Forged within the heart chakra, Aquarian leaders apply Buddhic qualities to all vision and purpose for the common good of mankind. Higher mental thought forms become magnetized and manifest on the physical plane activating the living Christ upon our planet.
through deep listening, we open the space for our souls to lead our hearts and for our hearts to lead and purify our actions in accord with the group good. And let us now see again the circle of our chalice. With the magnetic lodestones of our seed thoughts. And we connect with the impressions that have been drawn down through our meditative work today. And as we come back into body, in a moment, I think Alexander will paste a link for the community sharing board for this topic. And if you would like to, you are welcome to place your impressions in there or just sit with them as they take on the form of words. And we'll just um, take a few moments of silence in preparation to open the group sharing.
So we open the floor. If anyone would like to share, please raise your hand and unmute yourself. Um, there will also be an opportunity to share more um, through the impressions community impressions board. Um, if you would like to do that. Um, and we'll also um, be looking to generate some topics for next month's um, meditation as well. So please, if you would like to share, uh, raise your hand. Or if any action area group members would like to share any impressions. I see two hands are raised. Francis, it was, your hand was ra raised. I'm not sure if it was a mistake, but if you'd like to speak, please unmute yourself. I think <clears throat> I think that was a mistake. I didn't mean to, but I will share that I thought the the sound, the moments were very sacred. Beautiful seeds for the future. Valuable moments, thank you. Thank you, Francis. Lynn, please unmute yourself. Hello again. Um, my first thought is that um, listening to your presentations um, and visualizing, projecting into the future, um, this has made my heart sing, thinking of what will be coming. Um, and uh, I had some ideas um, as I was listening and as we spoke earlier. Uh, I sort of saw it all under the, um, the umbrella of um, helping humanity become soul infused, um, which will lead to the solution of a lot of the problems we're facing now. And thinking of leadership for this, um, I think of a couple things. First, uh, that leaders will have to themselves display soul qualities, as many of you have talked about, with the intention of drawing out the soul of other workers and seekers. And um, there are many qualities on a personality level or on a personal level, I guess you should say, that were listed and um, including uh, as qualities of soul energy, including people being discerning, uh, joyful, magnetic, intuitive, radiant, inspiring, responsive to need and compassionate, um, clear-minded and mentally polarized with the love quality of the soul well-developed, and people having a balanced perspective that is inclusive and concerned with the greater good. Um, it is no stranger to common sense when applied unselfishly. And in my life, I've see, I've been in um, a couple of groups that I thought, in which I thought leaders displayed soul qualities uh, that led to uh, wonderful experiences for the people involved. Um, one way I've seen that happen um, is demonstrated by the 2025 group, I think, um, and by teaching techniques in in certain educational settings, and that's by preparing ahead. Uh, when people pre prepare, prepare ahead and structure the environment in activities that are, number one, appropriate for the group at the appropriate level, and that encourage participation, communication, and growth, and often are as experiential as possible to stimulate synthesis. Um, 
the other experience I've had is um, um, in being in a group um, with William Meter, actually, that uh, in which he aided communication by listening for the eternal principles and what people expressed. He was able to hear the principles beneath their words. And what he validated those principles and then helped people see what other forms the principles could take uh, to bring their thinking forward. So I think those are two practical ways that, um, that aid uh, in bringing about the new age and that um, the Aquarian leaders can use. Um, and thanks again for including me in this. And I would like to just add that um, that um, um, I think uh, there was a quote in um, a public television show about Louis Armstrong. I'll see if I can find it here. Uh, someone said, so a friend of his was quoted as saying, I can't imagine a higher calling in life than making people feel joy, which is obviously a soul quality. So I thought that was very inspiring. And I also wanted to just add that when I, uh, at the end of the day, when I'm tired and I'm trying to think of, I've been overwhelmed by negative impressions from news or this or that of what's going on in the world. Sometimes I'll put on an old Star Trek <laughs> episode and that helps me to, to just, um, Think of a, a positive future uh, in which many of the qualities and ideas we've, we've heard spoken of are actually manifesting sometimes. So in a, in a fantasy world anyway. So thanks very much folks for your presentation and for your inclusion. <clears throat> Thank you, Lynn. Maya, please unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. Thank Great you team. for thank you for all of the uh, really inspiring words. This was a, a very welcome group to be part of today. Um, my thoughts were very much drawn to the subjective and meditational aspect of the work we do in groups. Um, I really thought about the new group of world servers as a whole today and the subjective aspect of the work that we do prior to any manifesting that we might be involved in and that I can really understand why Master DK has called this group the Ajna Center of Humanity, and that the fourth and the fifth ray are very active in this group. I really was inspired by the group nature of the meditation and how this group, the new group of world servers, prior to any outer work, is in meditation with each other and really holds that role as a blueprint for the future of how to work together and that that subjective synthesis of vision that is the quality of this group is what enables any outer work to be done in harmony and alignment with each other because of holding that synthetic vision and continually refreshing and updating it and using it as the inspiration for any outer activity and work. I think that's the true power 
of the new group of world servers at this time for humanity. So thank you again for this beautiful sharing. Thank you, Maya. I don't see more hands raised. I put it the next slide a little bit earlier than I was planning, but um, as we continue holding this space that we created together, now we invite us to look forward also and into our uh, work in the next month. You see. This are the three themes of the year that we focus through the meditation for the common good. And uh, following this sharing, we will have a brainstorming, or should I say, heart storming or group centers storming for uh, impressions, what topic uh, we could bring the next month within the theme of resources and sharing so what could be our focus in the next month so we invite you to stay after this uh, webinar for that and we'll generate some ideas that we will hold in the space of our group chalice and ask for our subjective group to identify the topic for the next month And as we come to the ending of this webinar, here's this schedule for our forthcoming webinars. Please watch for your emails. Sometimes our announcements come to the um, promotion folder or whatever your mailing server calls it, maybe spam folder. So please uh, look for announcements for those webinars closer to the dates. And as Rebecca mentioned in the chat uh, section of the control panel, there is a link to community impressions board for Aries cycle. And so if you have any further impressions coming after our gathering today, please share them on the impressions board. Rebecca, do we have any moment of s s closing silence before we shift to our circle to generate further ideas? Yes, let's just um, take a moment and connect with the Gaia tree. O thou who gives sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by a disk of golden light. that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey 
to thy sacred feet. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca, and thanks, everyone. So uh, we invite you to stay longer if you have uh, time. And uh, it's now we could uh, look into the next month. And as I mentioned, the next month, uh, in the sign of Taurus, in the cycle of Taurus, uh, which belongs to the fixed cross, we focus uh, on the theme of sharing resources and uh, anchoring the principle of sharing uh, into economic relations. And that is as one of prerequisites for the reappearance of the Christ. And so uh, we invite now, we open the floor now to invite any ideas for specific topics that we could feature within the theme of sharing. And just uh, note that the, the some uh, topics that we generated last month, we uh, keep them on the list. And as the uh, many of them were uh, seems seemingly more related to the theme of the mutable cross of right relations. So uh, one of those topics would be offered for uh, the. It's a uh, month of Gemini. But for now, we invite us to think about topic for Taurus cycle. And that's the fixed cross, correct, Alex? That's correct, yes. Since we... So, oh, go ahead, go ahead. sorry. I was going to say, I just was thinking about an idea um, for the Taurus, uh, for the fixed cross we're looking at. Since we just came out of doing Aquarian leadership, I'm wondering if we could look at Aquarian economics, what that would look like. As a general topic, I don't know putting it out there <laughs> we've got some people in our group who could speak to that actually uh i see um uh, i see andrea and i'm not going to point to the subjective group but that uh is a it's um this week, the Finance for Development Forum is taking place at the UN, and they mind shift, the consciousness shift is, do we live in scarcity? Do we live in abundance? Um, and if we lived in abundance, how might that, how might that change our point of attention? Uh, shifting away from profit and competition to um, what was said earlier about sharing and circulation. It's a good idea. Yeah, I was also thinking too, what would be the new form of currency? I mean, because as things change, we're gonna be going, getting away from, I would hope, monetary type things. And it what? might be interesting to visualize what form of currency would be, uh, you know, would it be the highest quality, you know, like before it used to be 
a person was taken for their word. And then that kind of went down, <laughs> down the tubes after a while when money became more important and that kind of thing. And I think we're still dealing with that. But uh, what would be the the qualities or what would we be looking at as far as currency? Some sort of shift has been from the mineral to the animal. And now if, if you looked at the economy from a human side and thought of the people as the essence of the economy, you know, yeah. what would the new money look like then? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. One idea that some people I know here in town have been pursuing, uh, it's sort of related to that, it, and you, maybe you folks know about this, it's called the commons. You may know a lot more about it than I do, but um, these people um, value uh, contributions and uh, people are um, given great credit for things they give away rather than things they keep and invest. Um, so you aren't recognized for a great amount of, a great hoard of money that you have, but you're recognized for the contribution you make to your community, to the world, and what you give away, essentially. So once again, we're going from selfish to selfless. That doesn't speak to currency, but, but it... Um, Exactly, except in an abstract right, sense. Right, right, right. From what you said, a value of contributions that people, it's more valued giving away than keeping and investing for yourself. So, yeah. That would be from self, selfish to selfless. Hmm. Over, over my life. So sorry, yeah. Lynn. Uh, no, you got. I was just going to say over my lifetime, when I think of the future, I see uh, in my mind, I see these small communities I, and not to think that they're necessarily rural, um, but small communities of people who um, support one another. Um, again, this is probably not unusual, but I, I see small communities of people who support one another, um, who exchange goods, who, uh, um, live at that level in these small groups, but yet are connected, of course, by electronics and the internet into mm -hmm. a larger world. <clears throat> I'm, I'm finished, thanks. <laughs> That's great, Lynn, thanks. Um, I just, uh, no, oh. yes, I apologize, Katya. I, I will unmute now everyone, just because we're still on webinar, uh, so please, con uh, you will be in control of your microphone. So if you'd like to speak, just unmute yourself. Sorry, Katya, go ahead. When I think about the Torian qualities is you know, related to Aquarius, Aquarian economy, but also it would, um, it was an interesting point that was came today during the discussion, because the new group is actually ruled by Taurus. And at the same time, it is an Aquarian server. So it is an interesting <laughs> connection. No, no one. Yeah. And uh, the second thing is, besides money, when we talk about economy, it is also important to um, bring in the, the energies that are being exchanged, used, and uh, not only concretized form of etheric energy, but others. And I think that might be also interesting to look at how, how we change it. That goes also for this contribution, but it's not only money that goes out, it's just goodwill, the energy of goodwill and will to good when you share and donate and give away to look at it from a kind of more holistic perspective. Um, over. Yes, yeah, so the um, phrase that has was coming into my mind was the currency of brotherhood, but 
it could be the currency of goodwill. It's um, really the actual method of transfer is just the the vehicle. Um, it's it's how the energy that we want to imbue or uh, circulate um, that the currency expresses. So yeah, that's what's coming into my mind. Yeah, like, almost like a multiple multiple vehicles of expression. You know, whether it be of goodwill or will to good, or economically, um, you know, whatever, you know, like what I believe Lynn said something about, I think it was the commons, the value of contribution. Um, there's so many different vehicles that uh, this could, uh, the resource in, that sharing can take. We're in the rhythm of trust that if the law of economy is rhythmic, uh, we're shifting from from uh, competition to trust, separativeness to, as we said, goodwill. And when that, the good that, of the whole community is the main concern, that certainly is a big shift away from worrying about your individual needs to making sure that the community uh, has in general has what it needs. Yeah, and you know, I don't know, I've kind of noticed just what's going on here in the US and that, but we're really, big government is really trying to take hold, but yet the smaller communities are kind of saying, uh-uh, in the states. So I think we're gonna be, obviously, we're, we might be going from large governing and, um, you know, resources and, and sharing in that respect to communities or states. And because every state or every community requires something different, they all don't require the same resources and sharing. So to put that on a flat board for everyone needs this and everyone needs that, that's not really contributing to the common good um, because it's, it, it is and it isn't, you know what I mean? Um, well, let me remind us all that we still have climate change. And so yes. there's a balance in, you know, in our thinking that how do we, how do we bring together the one and the many? It's but the, to know that we can't have one without the other. Yes. Yeah. In, in the Star Trek world, everybody has everything they need and they're allowed to, they, then, then they can go ahead and be creative and <laughs> I don't know how they've managed that. <laughs> I think too, part of it's listening, like, like they said, the Aquarian part is actually listening, a deeper listening to what's needed um, because there might we you know certain if we don't listen we don't really know what people really really need you know if there really isn't that deep listening and just kind of a superficial listening you're not really going to get to the to the needs of of everyone and uh, thank you i believe this is very important uh, part of that because again the, the level of maturity because for for some people or greater groups their evolution is not done yet and for them this is not something they need to leave behind this is something they're mastering in order to leave behind later on so it, it is a great lesson <laughs> hearing the balance and the true need, not something that is the declared, but something what is true. Um, not wishful thinking, but actuality. And it is deeply connected with the listening. And, and we haven't made enough progress yet, have we, to um, to in, in our society here in the U.S. anyway, to bring enough people along to to be able to 
self-realize and so forth. It's, you know, there are people with such basic needs that I think, um, as you, people were speaking of the balance that's needed between maybe government and small communities, there's, uh, there's a definite need for larger action, not only with the climate, but with helping people who are so underprivileged and suffering that they have to have some sort of bottom line of uh, needs being met that, that just aren't yet. And so we have a long way to go, I think, in both areas. I agree with that. Yeah, definitely. I It came to mind a book that I read a while ago. It's called A Gentle Action, and it was written by David Peet. I don't know if you're all familiar with that. And basically the bottom line was, I think it was like he was showing how like groups of people like churches and that were trying to gather books and, and build schools in Africa, you know, for the kids and things like that. And when they got there, um, they re nobody showed up because what they really needed wasn't that. They really needed water because it took them two hours to walk every day to their water source to bring jugs of water back just for living. So, um, uh, you know, just like what Lynn said and Katya, I mean, we probably, you know, think a gentle action is a good way of putting it to have an understanding of because every community and each person has different needs. We can't impose what we think people need, you know. And the listening comes, like Rebecca had said in her talk, the deep, deep listening. I want to invite uh, uh, people who in our circle now, uh, and didn't speak yet, if anyone still would like to share any ideas, please unmute yourself or if you're muted by organizers, raise your hand. Yes, I would, I would just like to say, looking at the picture on the, the screen, I think one of the last subjects which you said you thought would be better in, in Gemini that came up last time was the etheric. And as I'm listening to everybody talking, um, and I think listening is very important, but I, I think the etheric is, is also about sharing and I, I wouldn't rule it out of the uh, of having a place in our discussion for for Taurus. It's interesting Helen because I um, feel like um, I, I found a um, comment from DK ages ago and I haven't been able to find it again about the etheric and um, my memory of it was very similar to what Rudolf Steiner was saying about being able to see into listen to other people's action on a soul level um, and it, it was the the um, words from the Tibetan as I remember them were were um, explaining how how through the etheric we can actually deeply sense each other as and it and it's almost like a form of listening um, on that level so I feel like there's a lot in common um, and because of the nature of the etheric that <laughs> we're all swimming in it, um, that this is a, a mode where we can deeply sense each other and um, feel each other, know each other's, you know, feeling is astral, but actually really sense each other strongly and um, therefore probably sense each other's needs as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm probably taking it a little bit away from the, the topic that you're thinking. I, I'm guessing that because we are, we're all so connected via the etheric, um, that this is 
a wonderful mode for sharing. Thank you. I suggest to keep our space for further ideas open and uh, uh, please uh, send your uh, further thoughts via email. And now we come to the closing of our circle. May the power of the one life or through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May we fulfill our part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech. <laughs>